So we just took a look at the demo of uh, Docker. Now let's compare both these options. So remember, custom web service as well as uh, package containers were two options available for wrapping APIs and making it um, accessible through REST protocols. Um, custom web service is, uh, you know, one option. The package containers is the better option. And let me explain why that's the case by giving you this comparison table. Uh, first, and I think the most important is that uh, the package containers option is highly portable across environments. And that makes it uh, easy for others to reproduce um, what you're trying to do. Uh, easy for others to spin up uh, exactly the same software or exactly the same API behind the scenes powered by the same model. And that makes it a lot more easy for you to prove the, quant the, the value of the work that you're doing. Uh, but having said that, um, it's got a bit more setup that needs to be happened, uh, happening beyond just a simple fast API setup that you do. Um, so you need the Docker file to be created. You need the uh, automation around Docker to be done correctly. But the good part is all of that can be automated. And that makes it a lot more conducive for MLOps style automation to happen. So uh, just keep this in mind, like when you did the GitHub actions in the last weeks or a couple of weeks ago, you got the GitHub actions to execute within the environment that Git itself or GitHub itself provides. And those actions executed within that environment, you had no control on that environment short, uh, short of just specifying what needs to happen within the actions. Uh, so in those kinds of environments, you have even lesser control on environmental variables or configurations. Whereas if you use a container-based approach, right, uh, and you package the containers using Docker, then it doesn't matter the fact that GitHub is hosting the environment and it doesn't give you control. The package container is able to run within that and give you exactly the same experience as though you ran it on your local machine, which you tested it out. So in a nutshell, the package container approach becomes a lot more conducive for automation, especially for CI/CD purposes. But as with the custom web service, while it's easy for beginners to get started, uh, you'll have to actually manually manage the scaling yourself. Uh, you've got to do the CI/CD angles by writing your own custom scripts, and that might be a lot more problematic. So the way you would use both, like because ultimately the package container also uses the same fast API script that you that you write, is that you use the custom web service methodology for rapidly testing out uh, particular versions of the uh, you know the code and you do local testing local apps make sure that things are working and then once you're ready to take it prime time that's when you create the docker container right so therefore you graduate from custom web service to a package container once you move through your development cycle and majority of the development work is done Okay, so that's the brief comparison between the two approaches. Now, let's take it up a notch. Docker by itself is great for um, packaging the software into containers, but what if you need um, the ability to run it at very large scale, as well as the ability to have um, multiple different you know, versions of it being managed at the same time Right, in a way that's harmonious, but also gives you complete monitoring and the ability to you know, trust what is happening with observability, transparency, etc. That's where Kubernetes as a software comes into play. Um, so it's, um, it's meant to actually productionize containers at very large scale. Um, the good part about Kubernetes is that it's open source. While it was in, in, invented at Google, for running its own internal software on its internal machines. Ever since it got open sourced, it, it has become now the de facto standard for running containers in production, especially at large scale. Um, so all the major cloud platforms, all the private cloud platforms, public cloud platforms, all of them support Kubernetes execution. So much so that now, if you have containers that are uh, the vehicle of choice for your software applications, not just models, but also software, um, Kubernetes becomes the vehicle of choice for taking it production grade, making it production grade. So what is Kubernetes? It's a container orchestration system. It helps you manage 
scale and deploy containerized applications across clusters of machines so that you don't have to worry about managing those clusters of machines yourself. Kubernetes does it for you. Um, so for those who have done the big data course, you will know that there is a similarity between this and let's say something like a MapReduce or a, or a Spark kind of application. There again, the resources available in a cluster of machines was abstracted away from the uh, developer because he or she can just work with Spark or work with Hadoop or MapReduce and have it, the respective tooling, take care of the details around how those machines get the data that they need, the programs that they need to execute, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Likewise, with Kubernetes, you, you get access to one interface for uh, specifying what you want to do or what you want, what you want, uh, what you want to happen. And then Kubernetes takes care of the orchestration across all of these different clusters and the resources available to it. Uh, naturally, because it's very flexible and powerful, you can take control yourself as well. You can say how many clusters can be used, I mean, how many machines can be used at any point in time, which machines are considered to be healthy, not healthy, or loaded, not loaded, etc. But those are more advanced topics. We will not get into it uh, in this course. But you can read up about it online or as you experiment with the demo, uh, which we will show you, you can extend that demo to do your own experimentation on Kubernetes. Uh, Kubernetes is actually abbreviated in leet speak as K8S. So that's a very common abbreviation that you'll see. Okay, the core concepts of Kubernetes are uh, the following. Uh, first and foremost is what's called as a pod. A pod is actually uh, the smallest unit of, um, of a resource which wraps one or more containers together. Why should more containers be wrapped together? Why not just one? It's because sometimes a piece of software logically requires like two different functionalities. And those functionalities are themselves independent containers. Like for instance, let's say you're building a, a, a website the website needs two APIs to run. And each API is, is, is run by its own Docker and fast API implementation, which means you've got two Docker images, which both of them need to be instantiated as two different containers. But the website will not make sense with just one or, one or the other. It makes sense with both the APIs together, which means that pod which runs the website will need to have both containers running at the same time. So that's why it's the smallest unit which functionally makes sense is the key concept here. A node, on the other hand, is the physical machine, or it could be a VM as well, like virtual machine as well, but it's the physical host on which the pods run. There could be multiple pods running on the same node. A deployment is basically where you've got um, the particular app or application um, that you run, which is basically the collection of containers which logically makes sense together. And the deployment describes how those applications are uh, installed or in, on that particular cluster of machines. Like you could have copies, you could have replicas, etc., etc. A service, on the other hand, is what's exposed right, to the external world such that anybody accessing the service is able to access the application that you are uh, running. So. In, in conventional parlance, it's basically an external IP address which is static, or it could be a, a, a DNS name that resolves back into one of the pods uh, IP addresses, etc. Then auto scaling and rollouts or associated concepts with the pods and the nodes. Um, rollouts are basically when you've got software updates happening to the underlying operating system or the Python libraries, etc. Then that gets rolled out across all the nodes in the cluster and Kubernetes manages it for you. You can ask it to do a, a, a balanced rollout or a sequential rollout or staggered rollout, et cetera. All of those are configurations. And then the Kubernetes environment takes care of making sure that the software is updated. Auto scaling pertains to the fact that the node on which the pods are running could be bottlenecked because it's using up all the resources for executing the current number of containers. Let's say 10 containers are running on it or 10 pods are running on it and it's using up all the CPU, then auto-scaling allows Kubernetes to spin up a new node. I mean, assuming it's available. And in that new node, new pods are created. And those new pods are replicas of the existing pods. 
so this mechanism of scaling the workload is actually quite powerful because it allows you to scale up to demand and also scale down after the demand is satisfied so these are the core concepts in kubernetes so why do you need kubernetes when you actually have docker managing or docker having uh, docker building the containers these serve fundamentally two different roles now when i make this comparison i'm specifically referring to the docker open source package for building containers like i mentioned when we discussed docker docker the platform actually has other components which kind of compete with kubernetes in terms of functionality like for instance one of the components is called docker compose which does kind of what kubernetes does with respect to managing containers but we will not discuss that too much right now because kubernetes has become like the de facto standard right now so uh, let's compare directly what docker the open source project for building containers uh, does versus what kubernetes does so the primary role that docker plays is to build and run containers standalone containers whereas with kubernetes it is fundamentally designed to build a bunch of containers together which logically represent a, a unit of um, functionality that you are desiring so in effect it's managing multiple containers together the scope uh, that's associated with docker is running one container in one machine whereas with kubernetes you can actually you know manage entire clusters of machines or nodes on which the pods are running the networking associated with uh, docker is basically quite basic it's basically whatever a container being the lightweight standalone unit provides whereas with kubernetes the networking options are far more advanced like for instance you could have uh, a kubernetes cluster have a load balancer in front which allows it to balance across all the different nodes available and have the entire thing look like one service for the end user right so that they don't have to worry about which is the machine on which the website is running etc which all of that is handled so it makes it very easy for spinning up fairly sophisticated uh, you know websites which are able to scale to very large volumes and velocity scaling is automatic with kubernetes especially with managed kubernetes environments which is what we will show you a demo on google cloud um automatic scaling is possible which is a huge huge benefit right because then you don't have to worry about like configuring things up front or the cost incurred in provisioning resources which are not utilized to its optimum all of that goes away but as with docker it's manual so therefore if you then look at the ideal use when you work with containers for the first time obviously you're going to build fast apis first for the functional logic then you package that up and run it in docker test it out in docker ensure that yeah logically the container does its job correctly and then once you're done then you start to ship it to production with kubernetes and when it comes to kubernetes then you know that you can actually you know make this entire application very large scale as large scale as you want and as enterprise grade as you want so the analogy that uh, you can use to think about this is docker is the engine that runs the car right whereas kubernetes is the traffic controller or the, tra the traffic police that uh manages a bunch of cars right which are operating on the same shared infrastructure which is basically the highways or the roadways so that's how they are complementary to each other okay so with that uh, it's time for a kubernetes demo